2014 meeting of your New York City Council order. Would you please call the roll? Mr. Roletta. Here. Mr. Blake. Here. Mr. Bob. Here. Mr. Paul. Here. Mrs. Floyd. Here. Mr. Guthrie. Here. Ms. Hall. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Marmy. Here. And Mr. Rack. Here. Thank you. Next, if you'll please join us, Mr. Johnson is going to do the invitation. All by the pledge of allegiance. Let us pray. Lord, from changing seasons and the restless world, we turn to you who are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be with us in our deliberations. Be with those who lead us in Newark, in Ohio, and in the world. We come to you as humble servants and ask your blessing for those in need, those who are ill, and those who have had great achievements. Bless us all. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Next, we have the minutes for the September 15, 2014 meeting, council meeting. We have a motion to approve. Motion. Motion by Mr. Reddick. Second. Second by Mr. Cobb. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Close same sign. Under appointments this evening, Mayor Hall is reappointing Sue Spiker, Stuart Monahan, and Gary Burkholder. That's uh, been changed to the Jed Z, Jed Z2 board. Uh, the terms, their terms will begin October 20, 2014 and will expire October 19, 2016. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, All the same sign. Aye. Uh, let me do a board start just so I get that. We're going to just do a board start so I know how many, just to be sure. That, all right, roll call vote, I'm sorry. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Bove? Yes. Mr. Koss? No. Mrs. Floyd? No. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rapp? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> five, five. Mm -hmm. uh, the chair votes yes. Next, we have reports of standing committees. We have three this evening, one from finance, one from service, and one from capital improvements. Without objections, those will be received and filed. Next, under reports of city officials, we have two, one from Barb Jobs, both from Barb Jobs, actually, city tax administrator. Again, without objections, those will be received and filed. And under communication, we have one from Paul Moran, two from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, and one from Roger Lemons. Again, without uh, objection, those will be received and filed. Next, we have a public hearing. Uh, we're going to open the public hearing. Autumn, would you please read the public hearing notice? Notice is hereby given that the North City Council shall take action upon Ordinance Number 1418 on October 6, 2014. Said ordinance accepts changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 398 Eastern Avenue, City of North, Licking County, Ohio, from that of RH Single Family High Density Residence District to GEO General Office District. Is there anyone here to speak pro or con on this uh, public hearing? Yes, ma'am, would you like to come up and give us your name and address for the record? <coughs> my name is Emily McKinney. Um, I'm an attorney with Reese Paldrick Meyer, and I'm here on behalf of Looking for a Hospital. Uh, and generally, we would just like to say that the lot is contiguous to property owned by Looking Memorial, and if it is changed to general office zoning, it will just be used for overflow. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for our con on this? Anyone else? Okay, we'd like to close the public hearing. Autumn, would you read Ordinance 1418 for the second reading? Ordinance 1418 by Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rath, 
an ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 398 Eastern Avenue, City of North, Laking County, Ohio, from that of single family residence, RH, High Density Zoning District, to GO, General Office Zoning District. Uh, this matter has been referred to the Planning Commission and a letter of referral from Director Rhodes is in your packet. The first and second reading of 14-18, what is your wish? President, Ms. Goss. I make to make the motion to approve. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Goss, second by Mr. Rath. Is there any discussion on 14-18? Mr. President, Mr. Goss. I, I make you on record as, as being supportive of this legislation. However, I would like to ask that the Office of the Engineer give consideration to a fence for around that property. I think it's a situation where it could serve really the people on both sides of the fence. For one, it could help protect residential property from vehicles driving onto their property and the safety of children or people in the residential area. And also, it could help keep the neighborhood from parking in their parking lot that they're putting up. Uh, I think it's one of those instances where a fence could be a very positive aspect for, for both. And that would be my, my recommendation to the engineer's office uh, for this piece of legislation. Thank you. Any other discussion on 14-18? Seeing none, please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rack? Yes. 14 18 has passed, 10 0. Next on the agenda this evening, we have comments from citizens. There are two places for citizens' comments one is now, and one is after the legislation. Uh, you're welcome to come up and give us your opinion. Actually, just a brief comment from the citizens. It's not a debate with council, it's just your chance to have your opinion heard. Is there anyone who would like to talk during this first section of citizen comments? Mr. Westbrook. Richard D. Westbrook, 276 Pearson Boulevard, in Ohio. First thing I'd like to do is apologize to a couple of members there. Apologize to them for reasons we won't talk about. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, last time I was here, I referred to uh, a Virginia lease. That was probably before most of us were except Mr. Johnson. I apologize for assuming that she was that old, Mr. Johnson, because Mr. Ellington assumed that no one's older than I am. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, tonight, I'd like to talk about something a little different. It's called the blunders of our city government. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but I would like to bring out one in reference to what we're talking about. Uh, I don't know what year it was now, but uh, it's been a while back that there was a great discovery out there at uh, Burden Tree Golf Course, a great mammoth. Prehistoric elephant was discovered out there, and the good part about that was this elephant was nine percent intact. Uh, Sherman Byers is the one who owned that golf course, and what he wanted to do was to raise the money to put this prehistoric elephant on the play here in Newark or somewhere in the county. Uh, as hard as he tried. He couldn't raise that money. Now the problem with that was, it upsets me. <coughs> Building down on First Street, of which I know the owner, and I won't even mention how many millions he was worth, received two million dollars for this million, for this building that does nothing. And poor Mr. Barnes, he can't get nothing. But if you stop to think, if we could have got that on display here in Newark, oh, what a tremendous change we could have had just by tourism to see this great thing in Newark, Ohio. But it didn't happen. That was one of my blunders. And referring to that,
there was a couple others down here where I had uh, thought about as a display, and one of them was over there on the east side where the uh, auditorium theater was tore down, and in its place they put a parking lot and a pretty little park over there. And that's another way more than enough to put this on display. But maybe we had a better idea. Okay. Now we're talking about this $18 million project. And everybody I've talked to says, this is crazy. <laughs> I can't put up no argument for it because here we are, $18 million, we're all white in the sideboards, put up new lights, change the traffic flow, put in turnabouts, and this is going to be a disaster. I can see it coming. It's a bad idea about this project. And I know I'm not crazy about it, but I don't understand why seven of the council members here is willing to approve something like this. Uh, if we're going to do this project, and I don't know how I can stop it, I can take up a tape or something like that, maybe. It wouldn't do much good. But while we're at it, if this does go through, I suggest you figure out how much it's going to cost to undo it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else during this section? Of I think there's one more. Yes, sir. So just give us your name and address for the record, please. <coughs> name Lloyd Triple, uh, 388 Mount Vernon Road, Newark, Ohio. And my claim is the city's picking on me about everything I own, more or less. And they claim that I can't keep up with it. Between the city breaking me up and thieves in this town and the renters they're breaking me up. I met self employed for 47 years. I was in the peace business for 23, and then I was in the moving business for 24, and then I had a stroke. And then had to operate on my carotid artery, and then here a couple, few months ago, I fell down, broke my shoulder on the ice, and then I fell down, broke my hip. So I can't do much of anything. And, and uh, Joe Paul's told me about my maintenance, and uh, I went down there and talked to him a few times and he doesn't seem to care what my problem is. And he's finally about three or four places and had to get them all done in 30 days. Well, there's no way I can. And I've tried. So I'm not a very good speaker. But anyhow, uh, I, the only trouble I've ever been in is with the city of Newark. They put me in jail once to the north for not cutting my grass. And I know it wasn't high. It was only about eight inches tall or so. And uh, they put me in jail for 30 days. All the crooks would get down on work release and they wouldn't let me out. And I never been in trouble. So I'm about fed up this town. Anyhow, hey, that's what I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maybe after the meeting, you might want to have a discussion with Safety Director Spurgeon. He'll, he'll hold up his hand there. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else for this section? Come on up. <coughs> My name is Dale Sturgill. Dale 606 Euclid Avenue in York, Ohio. My wife and I moved here in 1978 from Portsmouth, Ohio. I drove a truck. The only reason I moved to this city was I used to come through this city for commercial motor trade. It used to be down in Williams. And I thought, oh, this is where I'd like to leave. If we ever move from Port this is where I want to be. And we did that. I relocated the commercial. The only reason I liked this city then, because the streets were so neat, clean, no potholes like we got today. And it was a nice city. I just loved it. And that's why we moved here. That was back in 1978. Three years ago, we moved to Chillicothe. My, my wife's mom and dad were in bad shape. 
So we knew him, so they helped him out. Well, he passed away. So we moved back. I still like New York. You know, almost born razor, almost. Like it. I'm seven years old. I love this town. But I don't love what's going on. See the potholes. And the paper says, oh, we'll do it next year and we'll fix the holes. They ain't going to get any better. Ice and snow, you know how well to share up the roads. And then we bring up, bring up and I, I ran the paper the other day, that's what threw me. I'm going to take $18 million or whatever and do a roundabout in Newark. That's the worst thing that ever happened. I've been to them. I drove to a lot of them. And some of them probably have too. They're the worst thing that ever happened down that square. This square is it's hard enough to see this. Well, I'm going to check around about it. And spend all that money. Then you find out, oh, I made a mistake. What are we going to do? Like the gentleman said, well, I got it. It's going to cost more to repair it. And you have to, if you have to change it. I don't like to see that. But uh, one thing I don't understand. A little over three years ago, when we moved here, from here to Chillicothe, the city of Newark put a tax. Road tax on the license tax. Oh, we fixed the road with it. What happened to that money? Disappeared. Went down Chillicothe. I paid $20 less for tax down here. And they were still fixing the roads and stuff down there. They were doing a good job. It's amazing what they're doing in Chillicothe. And they only have one big industrial. Well, actually, well, can't count the meat kind because, well, it used to be meat. The paper mill's still there, but they don't hire many. I used to work with a lot of people driving cars for Einstein. But anyway, I, I just can't understand where that money went to, all them tax, the tax on that tax. We should have used that for roads tax, I thought. They must have used it for something else. But I paid less for tax down in Chilcotty, and uh, they still fix the roads. They do. They really got pretty decent roads. They're getting there. They're not there yet, but they will. Because the mayor down there is really a good mayor. He's really pushing for it. Roads to be taken care of. We should be doing it up here. Those roads are not good. Like I said, they're going to get any better. We know the winter comes through here. And we're supposed to have the hardest winter, according to the Almanac. I'm not looking forward to it. But I still like Newark, and I'm going to stay, hoping things get better. And I hope you gentlemen and ladies look at everything before you come up this way. Turn around down here in town, boy. It ain't going to be fun. And it, it, it's going to cost us big money to come back and we do it because you made a mistake. Think about it. Thank you, Mr. Sturgeon. Anyone else this evening? There's another section after the legislation if you change your mind. I didn't plan on speaking, but there was two things that I'd like to uh, say. First, I want to thank Mr. Malbert. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy Wayne. 7441 Stewart Road, Newark. Thanks. I'd like to thank Mr. Mallard for, uh, in June I came before council talking about fair housing and the report, the annual report. I believe a couple of you asked for that report in electronic format. Since that time, Director Mallard has been working, I think, pretty hard to get that report. I don't think he's been successful yet with Mr. Eager, uh, but I do want to thank and for staying on top of that. I think it's important to have that report and that all of you see the report. And I hope in the future, uh, uh, when the city picks somebody for fair housing to dole out that contract, which I'm pretty sure Mr. Eager's gonna be retiring anyways, but I hope we find somebody that uh, does a little bit more justice to that program, because I think it can be a robust program. The, Citizens uh, for Housing put on a tenant workshop in August, and we had, I don't know, eight or ten people show up, and we've gotten a little bit of feedback from tenants who actually uh, were taken to eviction court, and because of the information and the education we gave them and the tools, they knew what to expect, and they actually were successful uh, and won their cases at eviction court. So it can work. It can help. Uh, in that manner. <clears throat> the second thing I want to speak to, and hope I won't get emotional, Mr. David Farmer passed away September 24th. I don't know if any of you remember him. He was the 
uh, elderly African American gentleman who spoke a few times before council. He lived at Washington Square Plaza. <laughs> he had a stroke and um, he passed away at Arlington Cemetery. Or Arlington Cemetery. You know. <laughs> yeah, really. Arlington Nursing Home. Um, I had a lot of respect for Mr. Farmer. He used his artwork, as many of you know, to express himself. Some people think it was, you know, thought it was political, which it probably was. Um, I had a lot of respect for him that he fought for what he believed in. He was harassed at Washington Square Plaza. He was called vile, racist names at Washington Square Plaza, and nothing was ever done about it. But he kept fighting. So I'm very proud to have called him my friend, and I will miss him. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Anyone else? Okay. Order, on the ordinance is on the second reading, 14-25. Ordinance 14-25 by Mr. Johnson, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Kopp, Mr. Marty, Mr. Rapp, an ordinance vacating a portion of Market Street, a portion of a 16.5 foot wide alley, and a portion of a 24.75 foot wide alley, as shown on the plat of the PM Wells edition, as recorded in Plat Book 2, at page 128 of the Licking County Flat Records, located south of West Main Street and west of South Fifth Street. For the second reading of 14-25, what is your wish? Motion. Mr. Johnson makes a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cox. Any discussion on 14-25? See none on, please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 14-25 passes 10-0. Next on the second reading we have 14-26. Ordinance 14-26. By Mr. Johnson, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cox, Mr. Marty, Mr. Rapp, an ordinance vacating a portion of a 16-foot wide alley, as shown on the plat of the Wilkins Smith Place Edition, as recorded in Plat Book 4 at page 114 of the Licking County Plat Records, located between Eddy Street and Central Avenue. Refer to second reading of 14-26. What is your wish? A motion. Mr. Johnson motions to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Floyd. Is there any discussion on 14-26? You know, office call roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. And Ms. Rapp? Yes. 14-26 passes 10-0. Next, this is sound kind of familiar, 14-27. Ordinance 14-27 by Mr. Johnson, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, an ordinance vacating a portion of an 11.54 foot wide alley and being part of the right-of-way on the east side of Lot 16 and Warner's allotment in the City of Newark as recorded in Flat Book 5, page 10 of the Licking County Flat Records located north of Dickerson Street. Referred to second reading of 14-27. What is your wish? Motion. Motion by Mr. Johnson to adopt. Second. Second by Mr. Rapp. Any discussion on 14-27? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cross? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 15-27 passes 10-0. Next ordinance is on the first reading, 14-28. Ordinance 14-28 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Cox, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. It's an ordinance to provide for the issuance of a $4 million of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of replacement of water, main, and sewer, or excuse me, and service lines and all necessary appurtenances including but not limited to hydrants, valves, and fittings. 14-28 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 14-29.
Ordinance 14-29 by Mr. Blake, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Koss, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rack. It's an ordinance providing for the adoption of post-issuance compliance policies and procedures for tax exemption obligations. 14-29 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 14-30. Ordinance 14-30 by Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, an ordinance authorizing and directing the North City Safety Director to certify to the Licking County Auditor the sum of $131,198.40 incurred by the North City Property Maintenance Department with respect to property maintenance violation to be placed as a lien upon certain parcels of real property situated in the city of Newark, Ohio. 14-30 will be held for a second reading. Next we have resolution for second reading 14-75. Resolution 14-75 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Newark to repair and submit to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development a five-year consolidated plan and a one-year use of funds action plan along with an application for fiscal year 2015 federal community development block grant funds as required by 24 CFR part 91.220 for various programs related to housing and community development. You've heard the second reading of 14-75. What is your wish, Mr. President? Mr. Blake? Move to adopt 14-75. Motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mrs. Floyd. Is there any discussion on 14-75? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rapp? Yes. 14-75 passes 10-0. Next on the second reading, we have 14-76. Ordinance 14-76 by Mr. Blake, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Koss, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, a resolution appropriating monies for current expenses of the municipal corporation. For the second reading of 14-76, what is your wish, Mr. President? Mr. Blake? Move to adopt 14-76. Second. Motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mr. Koss. Is there any discussion on 14-76? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 14-76 passes 10-0. Next on the agenda, we have resolutions on the first reading, 14-77. Resolution 14-77 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, and Mr. Rapp, a resolution appropriating monies for current expenses of the municipal corporation. 14-77 will be held for a second reading. Next, we have 14-78. Resolution 14-78 by Mr. Blake, Mrs. Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Ms. Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, and sorry, Ms. Hall. A resolution appropriating monies for current expenses of the municipal corporation. 14-78 will be held for two weeks for a second reading. Next, we have 14-79. Resolution 14-79 by Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp, Mr. Blake, Ms. Hall. A resolution in support of administration efforts to compel repairs of certain railroad crossings and railroad branch roadway underpasses within the city of Newark and encouraging the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio to act on complaints filed in regard thereto and to assist in compelling repairs thereto by the responsible parties. 14-79 will be held for two weeks for a second reading. Mr. President, Mr. Mr. President I, is there any reason, Mr. Law Director, we couldn't waive the second reading on that resolution? I mean, if, if there's no uh, compelling reason we couldn't, this seems to be an example of something that we could, and, uh, and I'd like to move to waive the second reading. Mr. Governor makes a motion to waive the second reading on 14-79. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Mr. Guthrie, what is your reason? The urgency of dealing with these, um, uh, these railroad problems. Thank you. All right, please call the roll. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bum? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. 
Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Marmy. Yes. And Mr. Rapp. Uh, to the reading rule has been waived. Mr. Justice. Um, Mr. President, I move that we uh, adopt resolution 1479. Motion by Mr. Guthrie. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Cost. Is there any other discussion on 14 79? Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Blake. Uh, Mr. President, members of council, I just want to again, uh, well, first of all, thank uh, Law Director Sassman for drafting the resolution. Uh, his office has been very, well, he has been very gracious in uh, working with the language. Um, again, I want to thank Director Rhodes' office and uh, particularly Sherry, who works in his office, for gathering materials, uh, for filing the complaints with the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio and uh, with the railroads. Um, this has been a continuing uh, series of complaints that we've filed. Um, and hopefully this will add some additional um, uh, ammunition uh, to the uh, to administration's efforts to get these spaces fixed. And uh, you know, what's South 21st Street has been an issue for a long time. We found reports back since 2011 where Pupo had said that that uh, area was deteriorating. I know that Councilwoman Hall and Councilman Rouletta have also received calls about these spaces, and so I think this is a good resolution for us to adopt and for us to support, and hopefully it has a good uh, outcome uh, in working with the railroads. So I urge its adoption. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Anyone else? I don't please call the vote. Mr. Rouletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bum? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 14 79 passes 10 0. And last on legislation this evening, we have 14 80. Resolution 14 80 by Ms. Hall, Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp. A resolution appropriating monies for current expenses of municipal corporations. Mr. President Blake, I'll move away for the two day reading room. Second. Motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mrs. Floyd. Mr. Blake? Uh, it's a payment to an employee. <coughs> uh, please call the roll of the way to the Mr. Rolletta? Yes. Mr. Bub, or excuse me, Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. Two day reading has been waived. Mr. Blake? I'll move to adopt 1480. Motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mrs. Floyd. Is there any discussion on 14 8? Mr. Please call the roll vote. Mr. Rolletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 14-80 passes 10 0. And that's the conclusion of our legislation this evening. Next on the agenda, we have a second opportunity for comments from citizens. Do you have anyone else who would like to say something? Okay, Mr. Westbrook. Uh, very unusual place in one night. Richard E. Westbrook, 276 Pearson Boulevard, Newark, Ohio. Uh, 14-30. Last time I was in there to the auditor's office, the trade department, they was telling me when we put these liens on property, and it takes years to process it, this uh, lien. And I just wonder if there's any way possible that we could speed that up in any way. Uh, second, the uh, tax for street paving. A lot of people don't understand why uh, with this tax, it's supposed to accumulate $1.6 million a year, but you want it every year. So is this uh, saying that our cost is going to increase $1.6 million every year? Or what is that? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. Yeah. Wall 167 South 6th Street. I am here to apologize. For three weeks ago, I was mad. Thought we were getting done. And I heard some complaints that some of the stuff I said wasn't supposed to be said in this place. 
So I apologize to counsel, but I did tell the truth. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to do it. Now, that's that. Like John Ashbrook said, I have talked to a lot of people in this city. Like when I had that meeting the other night at high school, I had talked to, since then I saw more people there. Since then, I have only found two people in probably our 400 people in the last five weeks since you guys did it. I mean, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I'm hoping one of you guys gets some sense in your head tonight, because tonight's the only night you guys can kill it, separate it. Separate the sir and the project down there. I hope one of you guys would have enough sense to start listening to the people, not to the rich, rich, and rich. The downtown associates, I even talked to two people downtown that said they are members of this downtown association, and they are against it. It's one of those little, little chick, you know, you know why you sit back in the corner and say nothing, and let us other people that think that they know what they're doing downtown deal with it. So I wish one of you guys would, I think it's Wolf 11, it's 11 or 14 or something like that, and bring it back up and separate that. And get rid of the, the turnarounds. I know what the sewer system is mandatory by federal law, but separate that or other project. The runabouts and the white that's nailing up the cities, the sidewalk. There's a lot of people out there that do not want it. Two people out of 400 I have talked to want it. And that's one reason why the more I get speed levels is going to go down to be big. We call that one amount. So I'm just, I can't clean, right? Like, so. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Alden. I appreciate that. Why, why, come on, man. Why you're heading back here, that rule is, if, if, it, is if it is passed, uh, one on the prevailing side in two weeks can't bring it back up under this lane. So, yes, yeah, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Daniel Crawford, 163 South Second Street. <clears throat> We live in an age of hyperpartisanship. As a consequence, this polarization of our politics has produced a gridlocked Congress which appears incapable of conducting the people's business. The President and his most loyal supporters will argue that this current unproductive atmosphere has more or less necessitated the unilateral actions that he has taken in pursuit of carrying out his agenda. After all, if the Congress refuses to work with him, where is the harm in him acting alone? On September 9th, an article authored by Andrew Prokop of Vox.com described how President Obama has expanded the powers of his office by way of his decision to act alone, where he deems such necessary. In seeking to reform our educational system, the administration has interpreted a provision in the No Child Left Behind Act meant to promote local and state level experimentation to effectively extort reform in exchange for the penalty protections guaranteed thereby. With respect to the Affordable Care Act, the President has acted repeatedly to delay enforcement of inconvenient mandates instead of working with Congress to rectify such. Regarding the debate over immigration, the President's Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program unilaterally created a means for undocumented dreamers to seek out a deferral of their deportation and a two-year work permit. Then we have the use of military force. In 2007, in 2007 then Senator Obama said, the President does not have power under the Constitution to unilaterally authorize a military attack in a situation that, that does not involve stopping an actual or imminent threat to the nation. End quote. And that only in instances of self-defense should the President act without congressional advice or consent. How would Senator Obama respond to President Obama's decision to redeploy troops to Iraq and to launch airstrikes both there and in Syria despite the lack of at least an authorization to use force? Do we, the people, not deserve a debate on any of these matters? The problem is that this list is just a sample of what the President has elected to do by himself. Moreover, these executive orders aren't entirely unprecedented. What is unprecedented is the current trend wherein a President has felt empowered to sidestep Congress on just about every major issue. Regardless of whether you agree with the purported goals of each individual action, we cannot ignore the consequences of permitting this or any President to increasingly circumvent Congress in making policy. Frustrating as this political process may be, the Founding Fathers did not create the system we have for the sake of political convenience. 
nor did they aspire to mold a government which rubber stamped the will of an ambitious chief executive. Rather, they designed this maddening mess for our benefit, for our protection. President Obama may mean well in what he's done, but his actions, bolstered by the expansions of executive powers which preceded him, have done long-term harm to the Republic. Every day that Congress sits on its hands or embarks on extensive vacations without regard for the need to legislate or even to rein in on executive abuse, abuses of power is another day wherein we shift further away from representative democracy. A government by decree is not in the interest of popular sovereignty. Instead, it is to the detriment thereof. I implore you, as representatives of the, North, uh, of the people of North, to pass a resolution calling for Congress to get its act together and stop this free fall into dictatorship. Thank you, Anyone else to see me? Struggle? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it matters or not, but like I said, I've never been in trouble before. I spent six years in the Marine Corps, and uh, Joe just, uh, I've been in and out of the hospital as I turned 70, and in the last four years, it's been nothing but hospitals, and nursing homes, and everything else, and Joe Paul just uh, had no sympathy at all, no matter what the problem is. I've been in there for a stroke, heart attack, uh, pneumonia, you name it, I've been in the hospital. My health just went downhill after I turned 70. So, um, that's all I can say. When I said they put me in jail one time, it was about 12 years ago, because they said my grass needs to cut, but after they put me in jail for 30 days, they got rid of the guy that was working for the city because of my grass was cut. My neighbors will tell you my grass was cut. It was in the field behind the Frankenstein on Lowe Street. And they, he tried to send I went to court and uh, I hired an attorney and everything. That didn't do me any good. So, anyhow, I guess it doesn't matter. Stick up for yourself. So, that's all I can say, I guess. Thanks Thank you. for your time. Anyone else? Anyone from the administration seat? Honorable Law Director, Mr. Sasson. Thank you, Mr. President. I will pass. Thank you, Mr. Sasson. Mayor Hall, I will pass it. Our uh, 20 under 40, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'll pass. And also, Mr. Blake. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to pass. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, they, they let me to sit in this position to speak, so I want to talk. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, listening tonight and then uh, what's happening tomorrow, you know, tomorrow's the first day of early voting. Um, you know, I think we live in a great country, we live in a great community. And, you know, the issues that are on the ballot when many of us go vote uh, either tomorrow or the next month or up to election day, you know, if we look at those issues, you know, it's, you know, I can't forget, and this is Floyd probably will remember, but one of our presidents sort of refrained to, um, if you look at a single day as a span of a lifetime, you know, the morning being when you're born, and the night being when you're close to death or older in age, and those issues are reflected in what we're going to be voting on this year. You know, we have uh, children's services is on the ballot, um, senior services is on the ballot, our library is on the ballot, and as comments were made tonight, our streets are on the ballot. And so we have a lot of issues, important issues, that are on the ballot. Uh, and so I encourage each and every one of you in this room to go and vote. Uh, make your voice heard, and uh, you know, we can disagree and kindly disagree, uh, but where it matters is voting. And so I encourage each and every one of you to go out and vote tomorrow. And for those people watching on the camera and watching this on YouTube, you know, please go vote. Early voting starts tomorrow. And I do support the street levy, and I support actually all this, all the issues on tomorrow. You know, just being the, uh, the liberal Democrat, I guess, but uh, I do support them. I support the children's services replacement issue, the library, the seniors issue, and the streets. So I'll go on record with saying that. But uh, they're all important, and I encourage everyone to go out. Uh, all, all finance committee, and it was out of pass. Mr. Bobby? I have a second. Mr. Cross? 
Uh, I'd also like to congratulate Mr. Blake and Mr. Roulette on your uh, being, being listed as uh, the 20 under 40. From those of us that are way over 40, uh, we, uh, we, we appreciate your uh, youthful and energetic leadership, and we thank you. That'll uh, pass. Thank you, Mr. Cox. This is Floyd. I have several things. Uh, first of all, the square redevelopment. I mean, I keep hearing the $18 million. First of all, part of that money is going to go for the water sewer separation. Secondly, the streets are, are going to be torn up to begin with, and they could have been put back just like they are. Uh, but the committee decided to try something new, and uh, <clears throat> there was lots of thought went into it, and one of the main concerns was the safety of uh, pedestrians going around the square by slowing down the traffic. Uh, I personally uh, think it will be a good thing for Newark. I think it will be difficult for some people to get used to. Change is hard. I, I believe that. Uh, none of us like, we all like things like they used to be, but they never are. Um, and the comments about the street, uh, about the streets, we all know that. We all bounce around on them. But one thing I think a lot of people don't understand, and, and we did raise the license plate for missive tax. We have over 220 miles of street in Newark. With the amount of money we have available for paving in a year, we can do eight to nine miles of the streets. That's it. Uh, and that means we can't do very much. Uh, <clears throat> the cost of asphalt has gone, gone from approximately $48 a ton to $70 a ton. Um, if the levy we have on the ballot, which is a 0.15%, which means, uh, and it's only on income, it's only for people who are currently working that would pay that. Those people who have retirement income, retirement income is not taxed. And that would go a long way to uh, increasing the amount of property or of streets that could be uh, paved in a year up to 15 or so, which means that we could get in a rotation. It would take a while to catch up, but it could get into a rotating thing so it's not 20 or 25 years between the time streets are, streets are paid. Uh, and I would like to mention that our street department has done some paving. Those of you who've gone out West Main Street recently, if you've gone out there a couple months ago, you went kaboom, kaboom, kaboom down the street. Now it's much smoother because our street department did some of that. And I think we owe them a debt of gratitude. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention. Um, this Thursday uh, at 6 o'clock at the GMT Hall, there is a North End Block Watch meeting. Uh, we're concerned, as many citizens are, about what goes on. And secondly, at 7 o'clock, the Historic Hudson Community Association meets in the same room at the GMT Hall. And finally, hopefully the weather is a little better than it's been the last couple days, but Saturday, Bluegrass Festival in this block out here between 3rd and 4th Street uh, goes from 12 to 8, from noon till 8 o'clock at night. There's uh, music, there are going to be food trucks, there's going to be, you know, <coughs> drinks that you can purchase. It should be a fun time, uh, and hopefully, you know, the more we promote downtown, I think the better off we are. And with that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Mr. Guthrie. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, first I, uh, you know, of course I voted uh, to put the levy for the people, and I, uh, I will be voting for it, and I, uh, uh, you know, I've been through 12 or 13 elections, and just about every one of my elections that my opponents have said that Mark Guthrie has never seen a tax he didn't like. Um, and so it would be out of character for me not to support this levy, uh, and to support the other levies too that uh, Mr. Uh, Blake referenced. Uh, I do think you know, that we made a good choice by going with 0.15 on income. Um, and it was helpful to seniors by doing that. Um, and uh, and I, there's just no doubt that we need the revenue. No matter what my position is on downtown, we need the revenue to fix these streets and the rest of our community. So, uh, so I will certainly uh, uh, be casting my vote in the affirmative. Um, 
Uh, I think that everybody on council knows the last uh, 33 days have been uh, pretty challenging for me. Uh, we got good news today. Uh, Karis, uh, my granddaughter, was uh, uh, who is, has leukemia. Uh, the team uh, children's uh, came in today and said that she is officially in remission. And though she will uh, uh, be on a regimen of chemotherapy for the next two and a half years, uh, her future looks pretty darn good. Uh, I want to uh, uh, say how lucky we are to have uh, Children's Hospital 40 miles from our homes. It is the, uh, actually number eight in the country in uh, dealing with pediatric cancer. Their uh, nursing staff and their physicians are uh, as good as anybody could ever find anywhere. There are people there, there are children on our floor from all over the world. Uh, in most cases, lives are being saved. Uh, I also want to thank uh, uh, the Ronald McDonald House. It is unbelievable what a resource that is for families. It's the largest Ronald McDonald House in the United States. And it does wonderful things for families. Um, and also, uh, I want to thank uh, CaringBridge.org, uh, which is a uh, wonderful website that keeps people up to date. Uh, on families who are facing health challenges. Uh, Karis has had uh, over 5,000 hits on their little page uh, in the last 33 days. And uh, it's just hard to believe that uh, a little girl two years old could go through more in 33 days than most of us would go through in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Petrick. I'm sure I speak for everyone here wishing her well in her recovery, so thank you. Ms. Hall? Thank you, Mr. Pass. Mr. Johnson? Um, I wanted to mention the groundbreaking for the fire, the fire building, which was very nice and very wet. <laughs> but uh, but it's on its way, and I think that's really well. And uh, I too am going to vote on behalf of the income tax levy. I hope it passes. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Johnson, Mr. Marlin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Westbrook, uh, I'm going to agree with you on something. First, I want to disagree. Don't fall out of the seat. All right. Um, the burning tree incident in the park uh, incident, um, city government had nothing to do with either one of those issues. So to call that a blunder of city government, uh, I think is a, an inappropriate use of a title. Uh, is it a shame? Yes, it is. But both the park was with private money and donations, and so was the burning tree um, with the mastodon. Um, and it is a shame uh, that about the mastodon. I, I kind of like the park down here um, compared to what it could have been, the parking lot. <laughs> uh, but I, I just wanted to state that. Uh, as far as the roundabouts in the square, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you. I still think that we need to be prudent with any kind of uh, funds that are associated with any government entity. At the time uh, in which the vote was made, uh, Mr. Loomis had not even determined which would be the most cost-effective manner in order to 
not only do the sedative separation project, but put it back together in, in a particular form. And whether that be the stormwater utility tax money that is being utilized, or whether it's private donations that are being supplemented into that, I still think that we need to be um, prudent and conservative with funds when it comes to any money that has any kind of tie to um, our government and uh, our citizens putting, whether it be stormwater, utility tax, or income tax from the city, that we, it is our obligation to do that. Um, Mr. Walgren, uh, as far as being able to invoke Rule 21, I was not on the prevailing side, so I cannot do that. Um, I voted against it. And um, mainly because of the financial issues. Sure, if we could make anything look better, I definitely believe in that. However, uh, I, I just believe that during these times of that, and economic times, we need to make sure that we're being wise spending of our money. Uh, speaking of spending of money, I am going to go on record to say that I am against the street levy. Um, I do not believe in increasing taxes uh, to fix a problem that is basically, uh, it's a priority within our city. We say it's a priority, our citizens say it's a priority, but we don't put our money where our priorities are. If, uh, if it's a huge priority that our streets and our infrastructure, which should be the third priority in any city government, the first two are your police and your fire, and your third is your infrastructure. And if that is a priority, then you put your money towards that. And our capital improvements budget and the percentage that goes towards street paving is not a priority in accordance with the percentage that goes towards street paving. If it were a priority, uh, then that percentage it would be a lot higher, and it would have been for years. We got ourselves into this bind. Now we're asking who to take us out of this bind? Taxpayers. I don't care if it's only 1.5%. I don't care if it's a dime. It is not the responsibility of the taxpayers to fix a problem that occurred over the past 20 years. It is up to this government entity to fix the problem, not money. Um, and then on a final note, I'm going to agree with Mr. Guthrie. I'm in the mood for agreeing with people. Wow. Uh, Children's Hospital is a great um, resource. Um, my daughter, too, benefited from Children's Hospital. And uh, she's so passionate about it, it is her dream to go back and to work at Children's Hospital and to be a part of their program. And that's one of the major goals that she has in her life is that someday she'll be able to give back with those folks that have given to her. And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mr. Marmon and Mr. Rapp. Thank you. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is I uh, had, well, had dinner with some ladies here tonight and uh, my wife was one of them. We had picked it up price upon this season. And they ended up at, somehow ended up at Rotary Park. And it was funny because they were just ranting and raving about the park and the fitness equipment that was there. Uh, and then I find out that my neighbor goes there just about every night. Um, so that, and they were all very complimentary about that. So I wanted to bring that up uh, and say some good things about uh, Rotary Park. Uh, I want to say thank you to the roads our service director in the street department for paving the roads on West Main from 30th to the hospital. Uh, they were horrible. Uh, and they are much better now. I'm sure it's a quick fix. Um, and it's going to be back to horrible in the spring after the winter, but it's nice to have them where they are right now. Uh, and I'm excited about the Bluegrass Festival on Saturday. I think it's going to be a good thing. I've been talking to a lot of people about that uh, and promoting it. A lot of people, I think, are going to attend to that. Hopefully the weather will be good, um, but that'll be a nice night for downtown, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Rapp. Just a few bookkeeping things. Our next committees will be Monday the 13th, even though it is Columbus Day. Uh, we will be open here at the City of Newark, so our, our committees will be 5.30 next Monday. <coughs> our next council meeting is October 20th here in this uh, room at 7 o'clock. I need to call personnel committee to sign. That's okay. This is call personnel committee. A motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion on this cross, second one is grab. All the parents in Cobb saying on. Uh, 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 on